Shannon, on a scale of one to ten, how bad does this make Belichick look? A one. A one. A one. Because, Skip, we've had 20 years to know who Coach Belichick is. This is not the Tiger Woods situation where the public persona was undermined by what was going on behind closed doors. We saw Coach Belichick cut Laurie Malloy the Tuesday before opening season. We saw Coach Belichick cut a man, Tyquan Underwood, the night before the Super Bowl when his family is in town and the guy had to watch the game from the stands. So we've had, Skip, we've got 20 years Traded Richard Seymour. Look at all the guys, the great guys that have gone. And see, it wasn't until they wrote this book and how he was treating Tom Brady out of the door that people were like, oh, Coach Belichick was like that? He was on full display for 20 years for all to see. But when you're winning, everything, all the Patriots fans and everybody was saying, this is what it takes to win. Well, okay, he believed that by releasing, letting Tom Brady walk out the door, he believed that was going to help him win in the long run. What Coach Belichick will not, will not allow is like friendship or friends to get in the way of making a decision. First of all, he treats all of his players as employees. There is no friendship. There is no relationship. I'm the boss. You're the employee. Do the job or else. That's how it is. And when you say, well, hold on, but Tom Brady should be treated differently. He says, no, he shouldn't. And I'm not going to treat him differently. Therefore, that's why, Skip, he was busy. Now, you know, Skip, somebody's giving you 20 years of service. Great service. But a model citizen for your organization or for your company. You're going to have at least the common courtesy and the decency to meet the man face to face and say, thank you for the 20 years of service and dedication that you've given this organization, that you've given this company. Mm -hmm. You would at least give him that. But that's not how he is because he says, you know what, somewhere down the line, somebody's going to say, well, you met with Tom. You couldn't have the courtesy to meet with me. And he's never going to allow someone to say, you treated him differently than him. Mm -hmm. And you treated him differently than him. Mm -hmm. He's not going to allow you to do that, Skip. So this book, although the excerpts that I've been able to uh, uh, pull from it, has been entertaining and like, well, damn. Skip, I'm not surprised by anything, Skip, because that's who he is. I, everybody thought he was a... Mr. Kraft also called him an a-hole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Skip, everybody thinks he's like that. He's very condescending. I know more than all you guys in this room can. How dare you question me? Do you know my resume? I'm a two-time defensive coordinator that won the Super Bowl. Mm. I won six Super Bowls as a head coach. And you are beneath me and you question me mm. and my decision making. So Skip, it didn't do anything for me. I, I love it. I love reading all the things. I mean, obviously, it provided details that we didn't previously know. But my perception of him, it has not changed. Mm. He's a horrible person, but he's a tremendous head coach. Mm. Two things can be true. Okay, let me paraphrase or rewrite this question for okay. you. Over the last 20 years, from what you've known of Bill Belichick, scale of 1 to 10, how bad has he come across to you? But, Skip, he's always come across bad to me. So so he would be a 9 on that scale as a horrible person? Yes. Maybe even a 10. He's, ten. he's okay. a 10. Be but, but here's the thing, Skip. He's been doing things. It wasn't until he did these things to him. Skip, I remember when this story came out, and I told you, I said, Skip, this is going to end badly. I said, it's going to end badly. And what Mr. Kraft did, Mr. Kraft was saying all these things, but he saw something that happened years earlier. Jimmy Johnson and Jerry Jones. He says, I'm not going to blow this up. I'm not going to cut the golden goose head off. Mm. I'm going to let this goose keep laying eggs as long as it possibly can. But what he did in the process, he let the farmer end up killing the golden goose. He didn't do it. Okay, but remember, Jerry versus Jimmy wasn't about Jerry having to decide between Jimmy no, and Troy Aikman, right? right? No, it was about he, but no, this was, no, it wasn't about that, Skip, but it was about we had an opportunity to continue to build, and they let egos. Mr. Kraft wasn't going to let his ego, whatever he thought of, he knew deep, deep down, Mr. Kraft is a really good man. He's a devout man. Ask him what he really, really, truly thinks of Coach Belichick. And if you say this is the only way you're going to get to the pearly gates, I guarantee you it'll be a different perception and all that huggy stuff that they have on the, and they're on the platform getting that Lombardi. Okay, I got it. My turn. So I will be the first to acknowledge I have not read the entire book. Right. But I have read dozens of <laughs> excerpts. Yes. Excerpted highlights, or maybe we should call them lowlights, low from the book. Right. Many of them shocking, 
though I would say not surprising because to your point, we knew it was sort of heading in this direction. I just didn't know all the anecdotes that would drive it completely home, mm -hmm. drive the final nails in the coffin mm -hmm. that is the Patriots dynasty. Correct. So in the end, my final big picture takeaway is that Tom Brady in this book is coming across as the all time hero and Bill Belichick as a head coach in the National Football League is coming across in this book as the all time villain slash scoundrel. That's, That's what you called him. Okay. You've I, been I, calling him that. I, I, I've always said he's got some scoundrel in him. So w what do we know from this? Well, I've been saying these things to, to your point really since Spygate, yes. that was 07. So that, that's a lot of years on TV that I've been saying, right. I don't trust him. I disqualify him as the GOAT coach because right. now we even get more anecdotes, one from Mike Martz about how angry he was because he believed heart and soul that Belichick commissioned having his walkthrough videotape the night before that first Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And then the second Super Bowl, we got all of it from Carolina. That's Marty not in the Hernies. book. Marty Herney has said on public, and he had a radio show yes. where he talked about they were convinced that Belichick videotaped their walkthrough right. the evening before right. the Super Bowl. Right. That was their second Super Bowl that they won against Carolina. Mm -hmm. Scoundrel. I, I, then we had another anecdote in here in which your coach, Mike Shanahan, tried to defend him through the Spygate saga mm -hmm. to Roger Goodell saying, hey, everybody tries to do this. Bill's just the best at it. Right. And that's kind of damning with faint praise, <laughs> if you will, because Mike probably has a little bit of scoundrel in him. He in does. That, that he does. He you, does. You know him. He does. I know okay. him very well. Okay. Because that's... If it's the old, if you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody, it's, right. it's the sport of baseball. It's the whole sport was built on mm -hmm. how can you bend the rules? How can right. you how can you do things to the, the baseball to right. make it spin? Okay, mm -hmm. we get that. So now let's start with the flashpoint quote of all the anecdotes that we got. And it's Robert Kraft leaving his Aspen home to go to a Patriots game and telling a friend, according to the book, and again, it's it's not a quote from Robert Kraft. Right. It is as Belichick tried to dismiss the whole book as second, third, fourth hand mm -hmm. quotes. But that Robert Kraft told a friend that I have to go deal with that, as you know, what did he call him? The biggest mm -hmm. effing a-hole in my life. Right. In my life. Right. And, and he was dreading having to even have to be in the same space with right. Bill Belichick because he did not enjoy him as a head coach. Because it's Skip, they're so different yeah. people. I don't know if anybody's ever been around Mr. Kraft, anybody's ever been around Coach Belichick, but they're two, they couldn't be more different as far as personality, as far mm -hmm. as engagement. Yep. Okay, and, and Kraft also reportedly called Bill before he hired him that he found him to be an idiot savant. Well, that's a contradictory term right. of he's an idiot, but he's a brilliant idiot. Right. He's, he's like gifted. Right. He's, he's got he's some like genius Rain about it. He's Rain Man. <laughs> and the point is that he's got rough edges. He, he is aloof. He's arrogant. He's difficult to yes. deal with. He he. He is immovable off his opinion. Once he gets dug in on something, you can't talk him out of it. Yep. We can't communicate. I, I don't like socializing with him. Right. But, man, does he have some gift of especially teaching and coaching defense, right? right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so th these are damning, damaging quotes to reputation, right? right? Mm -hmm. So then we look at the bigger picture, and we, we see a Tom Brady – as early as 2017, which we already knew from Seth Wickersham, saying, I just can't play for him anymore. I, I can't take it anymore. He did not evolve. That was the quote from, obviously, Guerrero last mm -hmm. week. And the, the whole idea that that he was antiquated, it, it was so antiquated that it became silly how, how Bill was stuck in the past. Mm -hmm. It's almost like he was a dinosaur, that, that Brady allowed to continue to operate because he thought they could still win in spite of Bill right, Belichick. Right. Right. But Skip, but Skip, now I'm going to defend him on this. I mean, because I think there's a lot of things that the way my grandmother and my grandfather raised me that I look back at, it was antiquated, but I cannot argue with the results. And although Tom Brady said, yes, it's antiquated. And, but the question is, how do you argue with the results? And remember, everybody used to say they can't be possibly having fun over there. It's so methodical. It's so this and so that. And Tom Brady said winning is fun, which goes to now. He just blew up 
A hundred years of sports, winning cures all, winning masks all. It could not mask his disappointment that he was starting to have for Coach Belichick. And at the Wild Skip, it says, you know, Mr. Kraft knew he was a jerk, but he was a jerk that was winning Lombardi's. Coach, uh, 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 Tom Brady knew he was a jerk and a butthole also, mm -hmm. but he was helping me win MVPs and go down and, and people regard me as a GOAT player. So he was willing. It wasn't until, Skip, everybody's like, it wasn't until when. His time came due to have to stand in front of Coach Belichick and says, Coach Belichick said, bye, that everybody's like, oh, my goodness, he could do that to Tom Brady? Yep. Because he believes he can win with anybody. Yes. They're cogs in his system. Even They're Tom was treated as a cog. As a cog. He was never treated. And, and when ta Tom screwed up, he would hear about it in film sessions t with the team. Right. He would be called out by Bill in front of the team. Practice would get stopped when Tom misfired or, or made the wrong right. call or decision. Yeah. yeah. Brady. You call him Brady. Brady. W what are you thinking? <laughs> what are you doing? Show him up in front of the team, yeah. which also sends a message to everybody. Nobody's the same. Yeah, you, I'll treat you all the same yep. way because you're all disposable to yes. me because I'm the genius right. behind this operation. Correct. Right. Okay, so now we get all the way to that 2017 season Super Bowl, mm -hmm. and we finally hear a plausible explanation why, for why Malcolm Butler was benched for the right. whole game. The guy who played the most defensive snaps during the regular season played zero defensive snaps in the Super Bowl, and I've told you a hundred times on this show, I still haven't heard any explanation because right. Bill just danced around it. What happened? Obviously, Brady was furious about it right. afterward right. and uh, actually commented on a post oh, yo, remember so the next Twitter, day. Yeah, oh, so maybe Twitter, maybe yeah, IG or something. Like, but I, he, I love you, Malcolm. Liked the post, yes. Remember that? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we have an explanation, and we'll deal. We'll, we'll have a direct hit on this later in the show. Okay, but but we now know that according to the book, that Matt Patricia got into it again. The defensive coordinator, coordinator at the, the time, time who went on to be an unsuccessful head coach at right. Detroit, mm -hmm. Coach Pencil, I called him. <laughs> but he's Bill's boy. Right, he, he's like the right hand man. One of two men that's ever left and been allowed to come, come back. back. He and Josh, Josh McDaniels. McDaniels. And he got into it with Malcolm Butler. I don't know the extent of getting into it. Mm -hmm. I don't know what words were exchanged. I don't know if they cursed each other out Malcolm. or Malcolm cursed him out. I don't know. But these things, these episodes, these conflicts happen every day on every NFL yeah. practice field. They yeah. just happen. You know it. And yes. I know it. you see it in hard knocks. Like every episode, they're getting after each yes. other for whatever. It's like heat of practice battle, yeah. right? I've seen coaches, coaches and players almost come to blows. Well, exactly. And I so doubt, arguing yeah. and you go to the Super Bowl. And, and now you're going to bench this guy for the whole Super Bowl. And I told you after the Super Bowl, it felt a little sabotage to me because Brady was getting too much credit. So what was the outcome in Robert Kraft's view of the Super Bowl? Wait a second. Our defense with no Malcolm Butler allowed Nick Foles to become the MVP mm -hmm. by scoring 41 points yeah. in a Super Bowl mm -hmm. while Tom threw up for a playoff record, not a Super Bowl, an all-time playoff record, 505 yards. We put up 33 and we lost by eight points. Right. Kraft had to be incensed. Brady had to be completely over the edge. Yes. That was when Brady came out and did the Q&A with uh, yep. Jim Gray at the, uh, the Santa, Santa Monica. Monica uh, uh, what was it? Uh, uh, is an appearance that right. he made mm -hmm. at a conference, mm -hmm. right? And remember what he was saying that, right. uh, you, you know, I, I plead the fifth yep. about my happiness. Do you feel appreciated yeah. sometimes? Yeah, sometimes, yeah. Okay. So here's, here's the other big takeaway from this book that is shocking to me. They came back the next year in 2018 when Tom didn't want to play there anymore. And Tom rose above all that mm -hmm. and led that team into the AFC championship game at my homeboy. Yep. And remember what happened in overtime? Again, Patrick didn't get the ball. Right. Tom got the ball. Right. And Tom converts three straight third and tens in the cold and the wind in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. One to Edelman, two to Gronk. They pull it off. They go right down the field and score a touchdown, which ended the game. And they go to the Super Bowl. Tom didn't play very well, but he never plays very well against that Ram defense, right? right? Mm -hmm. And Jared Goff played worse, and I give Bill credit for his defensive game plan, but, but the quarterback on the other side was about to eventually not be the quarterback right. because they just didn't love him at mm -hmm. all. Right. So 
Tom did what he always does. He had a game-winning drive in the middle of the fourth quarter, and they won a Super Bowl right. in spite of all this right. chaos right. that was swirling behind closed doors in New right. England. That's shockingly great to me. Yeah, and that just goes to show you that Tom was willing to put that aside and do what's best for the best interest of the team and try to win a game, even though I'm not so sure. I don't want to use the word despise, but I think I would like to say he had a strong disliking for his head coach. And I think the guy above both of those guys, Mr. Kraft, Put it all that aside. He likes stacking those Lombardis. Every year you see the, his plane, the plane that they fly on, Skip, it got six Lombardis on the tail. Yep. So he likes that. So I'm willing to put that size. I know the guy's a jerk. I yep. know a guy, he's hard to play for. Hell, it's hard for me. And he is up under me. Yep. But I'm going to put that aside. Coach Belichick always felt, Skip, it was him. Malcolm Butler is a cog because you remember when he inserted him in the game in that Super Bowl that they came back and beat uh, Seattle, Skip. Yep. Malcolm Butler wasn't a starter. He was an undrafted free agent. Mm -hmm. But the guy that, uh, I forget his name, but he was getting toasted. He inserted him. Malcolm Butler makes the play. He says, see, I can do anything. He started to feel, he, well, he's been feeling himself. Mm -hmm. He said, you know what, Malcolm Butler? You going to talk to the D.C. like this here? We going to sit you down. We so good, we going to win anyway. That is correct. And that, because, Skip, it would not have even been a story. It would have been a little footnote. But because you lost, people like, well, hold on. How did the guy that played the most defensive snaps all year not even get a snap on defense? He was relegated to two or three plays on special teams. Yep. How is that possible? Mm. He had to answer those questions where had they won, it would have been Coach Belichick. He bitched the starter guy that – so okay. that's the way he, that's the so, way he views so it. So this all reminded me of a book I did write about the 1995 Dallas Cowboys okay. who won the Super Bowl in spite of each other. It was chaos behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. It was Troy Aikman not speaking to Barry Switzer, then the head coach, right. from December 4th all the way through the Super Bowl. They would not speak to each other. And they won in spite of themselves because... They were by far, far the best team. It, the, yeah. it was Dion and Michael and Emmett. You, you know, it, Dion had come over from San Francisco. Right. They were just too great. Right. And they wound up just overwhelming Pittsburgh in the Super Bowl because it was Neil O'Donnell at right. quarterback Correct. and Larry Brown right. ended up being the MVP. Correct. Okay. Well, that was different because by, by 2018, the cupboard's starting to get bare because Belichick is getting exposed as a team builder. Right. I, I do not doubt his abilities as a defensive coordinator, a defensive mind, right at the top of the list. I, I'll give you all-time greatest defensive mm -hmm. mind. You can go all the way back to the 2001 right. Super Bowl right. against the greatest show on turf. Mm -hmm. I give you that. But on talent level, he's slowly but surely letting it just slip away because he's saying – I'm so smart. I am mm -hmm. so great. Right. My aura is so powerful. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who my players are. I'll do it any uh, – I'll just figure it out. My genius will right. prevail. No, it won't. Right. At some point, if you lose that quarterback mm -hmm. who was your buffer in the locker room, right. who kept everybody it, it, to a low roar, mm -hmm. like everybody was upset with, with a lot of things Bill Belichick did, but Tom would say, no, just, just – can it just right. just keep it to mm -hmm. yourself because yeah. we can win in spite of him correct right skip it's kind of like phil jackson well phil had scotty and michael he had shaq and kobe but when he was entrusted to put the knicks together what did he do fair enough you see yeah. it's skip. you got that skip if you got a guy like that it's just like aaron Rodgers in green bay and we don't think mike mccarthy is is lombardi or anything in between okay but when you have a guy like that you have a peyton manning you have one of these general these historically transcendent yep. quarterbacks you he can overcome a lot okay and that's what coach belichick relied on coach he, Bel he was able to treat everybody else like that because he treated tom like that and people like well if Tom don't say nothing, Skip, how can I say something? Everybody talks about when they would go in there try to get their contract, he said, but we pay Tom this. We yep. can't pay you more than Tom. That is correct. And there's also the anecdote that Tom finally threw up his hands and said, I keep taking team discounts. Thank you. You know, hometown discounts. And yet I have no input into how the team is being Thank you. built. Yes. And it's the Aaron Rodgers dilemma. Right. But they gave Aaron, they tossed him some bones. Yeah. Randall Cobb. Right. We'll, we'll let you do this. Right. You know, we'll give you some of the play calling, whatever. No, no, not there. <laughs> Tom is like, wait a minute. Yeah. I'm, pl I'm pl playing for pennies on the dollars. And you treat me like this? That's what happened. Oh, wait a minute. What's wrong with this picture? Okay. And finally, quick comment from you. There's the anecdote about 2016. Donald Trump at a rally as he was campaigning for president read a campaign uh, letter, mm -hmm. a, a, a letter of support written by Bill Belichick. Yep. 
a number of players in the locker room did not love it. So Bill addressed it, but didn't do so convincingly Correct. in the locker room. And there was still some real misgiving about, mm -hmm. wait a second, he did that for him? Correct. Right? I'm not surprised at all, Skip, because let me tell you something how this thing worked. You're not just writing a letter for somebody. I'm not just going to take my time and write a letter for someone that's not Daryl McCormick, that's somebody that's not yep. Keith Burns, or a very, very close friend. So for him to, in that setting, and the guy read it, come on. And them guys looking at you say, he didn't explain it because, like you said, Skip, I, I don't really know how much. They believe, like, when he's telling them, if we do this, we can win the game. But I don't know how much else comes out of his mouth that they believe. I, don't, I believe very little because Tom says I only say 10% of what I'm actually mm -hmm. thinking. What well, Coach Belichick says, zero. Zero, I would agree. It's a big, fat zero. <laughs> big, yep. fat zero. Yep. So, Skip, for me, the reason why I said it was a one, and I think you understand, you know who Coach Belichick is because you've been saying it for the longest. He got scoundrel in him. He got scoundrel. Maybe people didn't know he was this big of a scoundrel. Yep. But we, given his history, I got 20 years body of work. That says, okay, yeah, that's him. That's him. Hey, I can see him doing it. This is, I don't, I don't care what anybody says. This is not a Tiger Woods moment because Tiger Woods' public persona. I'll buy that. Private oh, persona. That, you want to talk about a shocker. Right. Ooh. Coach Belichick, you see how cold and how callous he is and how condescending he is and feel like, who are you to question me? Mm. Yeah, it's all fascinating how it all affects his persona. The book, I cannot rate to read. Tom, better than me. About it. What'd you say, Shannon? Tom, better than me. Because uh, I don't wouldn't have you know I don't dressed him a long, long uh, I, time I agree. ago. I agree. Yes, I agree. That's a really good point. He has kept it in for a long time, but maybe it will uh, be on display on Sunday. Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.